in a rainforest. To see a truly dreadful scene, you only need to look carefully under your feet. There's a group of ants walking by between thickets of grass. These creatures are very hard working. They spend every day getting food and improving their anthill. Each of them works for the common good. The long column of ants is heading home after a hard day's work. Some carry seeds, others haul twigs to strengthen their home. If the group is attacked, the ants will fight together. But the enemy approaching the squad right now is too small. Even tiny ants can't see it. A minuscule, almost invisible fungal spore flutters through the air and lands on the back of an ant. Its body's covered in armor that protects it from any danger. But the spore attaches itself and creeps between the shield plates. Of course, the unlucky insect doesn't suspect anything and goes home. The next day passes as usual. The ant works for the good of the anthill. The strange thing that got inside it doesn't make itself known. Another few days pass. The ant still feels fine, but the spore inside its body is growing. Slowly, it takes over its nervous system. A week after the infection, the ant begins to behave strangely. It doesn't sleep well, doesn't work hard. One day, it leaves the colony unnoticed. The parasite spore has taken control of the ant's muscles. The insect wanders the forest in search of the perfect spot, perfect for the spore. The ant doesn't control its own body anymore. It climbs a blade of grass or a bush to a height of 10 inches, grabs the stem with its jaws, and waits till the end of its life. The parasite spreads throughout the body and crawls out days later. Every day it increases in size until it takes the form of a mushroom. Then, when the fungus is fully grown, it releases hundreds of thousands of tiny spores into the air. These spores are scattered throughout the forest. One of them falls on the back of another unsuspecting ant, and it starts all over again. This cordyceps fungus lives in the rainforests of Thailand, Africa, and Brazil, and has been infecting ants for tens of millions of years. Some parasites are even more inventive, like the ladybird parasite. It's not a fungus or virus, but a wasp. When this creature is about to lay eggs, it looks for an ideal nanny for its kids, and the ladybird becomes a perfect candidate. The wasp flies up to the red and black beetle and stings it. Through the sting, the wasp releases one egg. For the next 20 days, the parasite develops inside the ladybird. When it's fully grown, it crawls out. But the nanny job isn't done yet. The larva creates a cocoon between the ladybird's hind legs. Inside, it will turn into an adult wasp. Until then, the ladybird will keep the cocoon safe. The larva makes a bodyguard out of its host. Scientists are still unsure exactly how the parasite manipulates the host. It might be the larva injects some poison into the ladybird that turns on its guardian instincts. Other insects and animals are wary of ladybirds because of their venom. So, if a predator sees the red and black spotted shield, it'll probably stay away. But if someone dares approach, the infected ladybird will pull up its legs and try to protect the cocoon with all its might. When the wasp inside the cocoon is formed, it leaves its bodyguard. Sometimes, the ladybird stays alive after that. Wasps can ruin not only ladybirds' lives, but some spiders' ones too. Web-manipulating wasps fly around the rainforests, looking for the perfect host. One of them notices a spider hunched on its web. The wasp flies closer, but it's not gonna bite. It just drops the egg on the spider's back. When the larva hatches, it starts feeding on the spider. Then, it injects a chemical that alters the spider's mind. The host begins to weave a stronger web with a different pattern and shape. This web is going to be a new safe place for the larva, where it will turn into an adult wasp. The larva leaves the spider when the job is finished, clings to the web, and creates a cocoon. Inside, it turns into a wasp and flies away to procreate and find a host. Parasites can not only be found on land, there are lots of them lurking underwater. Let's go down into the sea depths. We see a school of jellyfish, some sharks, octopuses, dolphins. 
but you should pay attention to the lonely little clownfish. It slowly swims among the corals and algae, trying to get some food. It notices some seaweed and swallows it. We follow it into the fish's mouth and see two tiny black eyes staring at us from there. What you're gazing at isn't an organ, but a tongue-eating fish parasite. It's a crustacean that enters the fish's mouth through the gills and clings to the tongue. With time, the parasite just replaces the organ and performs its function. Fortunately, the unsuspecting fish doesn't feel anything. If you notice a strange tongue inside a fish you've just caught, don't try to unhook the parasite. It can bite you. Yeah, all these parasites live in the deep jungles and deeper seas, so people don't worry too much about them. But there's one that lives everywhere, including your home. Toxoplasma is a single-celled parasite. It's found in raw meat, inside animals, and in dirty places. But its favorite place to be is inside cat intestines. Somewhere in the streets, a stray cat answers nature's call. The waste, infected with toxoplasma, gets into the sewers and mixes with water. A mouse runs along the sewage pipes, it drinks the water, and toxoplasma enters its body. Some time passes. The mouse runs along dark alleys, among garbage cans, looking for food. Then, it gets into someone's house. It runs inside the wall and gets to the kitchen through a small hole. There, a cat notices the rodent, but the mouse runs away. And at this very moment, the parasite triggers a reaction within the mouse's brain through its hormones. The toxoplasma wants only one thing, to get to the cat's intestines. The parasite changes its host's behavior. The mouse becomes bolder. It's attracted by the cat's smell, so it comes out of hiding. The cat catches the mouse, and toxoplasma reaches its goal. The bad news is that people can also get infected with the parasite. You can eat an infected piece of meat or pet an infected cat. Of course, a human is unlikely to get into a cat's mouth. But research suggests that toxoplasma might affect people's behavior in different ways. It may make people more restless, prone to risk, guilt, and self-doubt. Scientists think that from 10% to as much as 60% of all people in the world are infected with toxoplasma. This number may be greater than the number of people connected to the internet. Meet the parasite you should probably be afraid of, the Loa Loa worm. Another bad thing that can bring a lot of trouble. It lives in West Africa. Some species of flies are carriers of this creature. Just one infected fly bites you, and the tiny worm penetrates your skin. It crawls all over your body, feeding on your fluids. These parasites can live inside your body for 17 years. And you may not even notice them until they reach your eyes. Then you just might actually see the parasite crawling right in front of you. The good news is, getting rid of Loa Loa isn't very difficult. As strange as it may sound, parasites are very useful for life on Earth. To resist a parasite, the body must constantly fight and come up with new ways to defeat the enemy. This stimulates the development of body protection. Our immune system becomes stronger in this confrontation. Parasites control the population of many living things. The number of insect pests will increase if parasites disappear. Insects will eat entire crops and be able to plunge humanity into hunger. Many scientists support not the extermination of parasites, but their preservation. Parasites are used in medicine. Leeches are parasites, but they help purify human blood. If you get sick with a virus and can't be cured, Another virus might be able to defeat it.